What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, I want to talk about Global ID. Global ID has been in Rails for a little while, but I did not ever really take the time to take a look at it and see exactly what it does and how all the different ways you can use it and so on. So I thought this would be a good time to do it. And actually, I've got a handful of other things like that in Ruby that and Rails that are a little bit newer stuff that I just kind of didn't really pay attention to, but it always kind of was curious to me. So um, expect to see a few more videos like that coming out soon. Before we jump into the code, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, we're putting out content pretty much every day. And uh, as always, be sure to like the video, give it a thumbs up if you do actually like it. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So I've gone ahead and set up a simple Rails app and uh, what we're going to do basically is work through a few examples and uh, to kind of get a sense for what global ID can actually do and we're going to then look at adding a small feature to the app that I built to actually get a sense for how we can use it. So this app is super simple and it's basically got four models. It has articles, videos, I think it has forum posts, and uh, then each one of those things has many comments. So you can add comments to any of them. So I've already added a little bit of data and I wanna just basically show you how Global ID works as a starting point. So it's easiest to understand with an example in my opinion. So let's just pull up the first article. So what we can do once we have the article, first of all, let's set it equal to this variable. What we can do is say article two global ID and we're going to get back this global ID object which has a URI which the name of this project is global demo and then it's got article slash one written out here. Now what we can do with this if we set this equal to something like GID doesn't matter what you call the variable obviously what we can do is say uh, global ID and then that has an object in it that's like uh, what is it locator and so what we can do is say dot locate our GID. And that's basically going to pull back the article. So if we break down what's going on here, basically this global ID, or in our case, this GID variable, um, it has everything baked inside of it that's needed to look up the article that we're referencing. So this can be useful in a handful of scenarios and we're gonna try to tackle a couple of them in the conversation here. Um, but let's take a look at what's inside this GID. So if we uh, go GID.public methods false, you'll see here that this has a model ID, a model name, so we can say GID.model ID and it's gonna give us back the ID of the object that we're looking at, name is the same thing. So one of the most common uh, use cases that you see of this is actually an active job. Now I'm not really going to talk about that here, but I wanted to mention it. Um, I found an example, it might have actually been in the docs where they were saying that used to you would pass like the model name and an ID to a job so that it could look up the information you want later. With this you just have to pass it this one thing and it can go ahead and look everything up uh, smartly essentially. Um, that's not how we're going to worry or we're going to use it here. Um, but anyway, I wanted to mention it. So this also has a pretty cool uh, method too called to signed global ID. So what we can do is say article dot to signed global ID, and then in this we can say um, let's let's set this to sig, and then we can say sig dot to s, and then you get back this string here. So this is obviously completely opaque. You don't know what this means um, outside of the system or anything like that, which makes this really interesting for sharing or something like that where you don't want to give away like URL structure or parameters or whatever. So um, we can do the same kind of deal we did before, global ID, uh, and then it's locator.locate signed, and then we'll just do sig. Um, I need a capital D in here, and we get back our article again. And I think we can actually do dot two s, and it's the same thing. 
and uh, so that's pretty nice. And I think we can do the same thing with our um, with our global ID that we had earlier, the regular. So I think we can do. Let me see if I can uh, just do locate and then gid.2s. Just doing a bunch of sanity checks here with everyone. And so yeah, so we can look it up with the string based version as well. There's plenty of other little things like there's expiration, uh, which is cool for like if you share a link via an email that should only work for a couple of days or something like that. All of that's over in the docs. So for all of that, I'll let you kind of just go explore on your own. Um, but I want to go ahead and jump into the example I want to work through. So if I pull up my demo here, so we have articles, which I had mentioned. Um, we have um, forum posts, and then we have videos. And each one of these has the ability to add comments. And for these comments, you can create them. And right now, it's just sort of doing a default scaffold kind of behavior. Um, you can see here that basically, uh, there's three foreign keys, which uh, is probably not the best way to set this up, but it's how I set it up for the quick demo. Um, so anyway, you've got three foreign keys, and it's not linking to any of them at the moment. And um, now I'm kind of lost in my app. So anyway, what we want to do is set it up such that whenever we create a, con uh, a comment, it goes ahead and attaches it to the right object, but we want to do that based on a simple global ID architecture. So let's go have a quick look at the code, and this is actually going to be really easy, I think. I haven't actually done this yet, so as always, I'm doing a little experimenting and exploring on these videos. It's partly something that helps me, so... Um, anyway, if we look at, let's say, the comments controller, it's just a standard scaffold. I literally just ran the generator and that's it. All of the models are essentially the same. It's nothing really here, just it has many comments. So what I would like to do is in my, I don't even need to mess with the controllers, I don't think. I think all I want to do is in my views. Let's start with articles, for example. Let's go to the show page. So right now, I'm rendering a comment form, comments slash form, and then just initializing a new comment right here in line. And what I would like to do is say something like um, commentable, I'm making this up, commentable item ID, something like that. And then we'll say at article dot global ID dot two s something like that. Let's go for that. And then over in my comments form uh, form, I guess all I want to do is add a hidden field tag, and we'll just say um, hidden field tag and then we'll just say commentable item ID and then I'm gonna make that be commentable item ID and let's just refresh and make sure that it doesn't break and it does undefined method global ID oh I need to say two global ID which we all just went through together and I still messed it up so here we go two global ID now let's go refresh and see where we are Okay, cool. So now that global ID is hooked up and the way that we've done this in our comments controller inside of create, um, we should have a params and it should be, what do we call it? Commentable item ID down here. So this should basically just be a string coming in through the form. Uh, and because we put it in the hidden field tag, it should just be at the top level of the params. So what we should be able to do is say um, commentable item equals and then global ID and then locator locator dot locate just like that and then what we should be able to do is say um, and we can actually do it like this we can say um, Huh, just thinking about where we should put this. We could put this like 
in the if comment dot save area then we could say something like um, commentable item dot comments and then append this comment something like that so let's try this let me fix this horrible spacing here and then let's just kind of see what's going on with it so let's uh, and I, you can see here that I've got a comments with a zero and this should print out comments um, that are attached to this object and before we do all of this I don't, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of a couple of things here real quick um, I don't need any different formats which is gonna make all of this stuff break so and I don't really care about the notice for this example so we'll redirect to request.refer and actually there is no validation on this model right now and this is a simple example so we're just gonna like assume everything's gonna work uh, for the moment and uh, let's try it shoot from the hip okay so testing this out and create comment and so you can see here that basically it creates the comment and now it is attaching it to the article so it's really cool about this and it's interesting because I think this is useful in a bunch of different kind of polymorphic situations where you have objects that sort of behave similarly um, so what I can do now is in all of my other forms uh, or my show pages for like forum posts let's go ahead and just paste this here and just trying to save some typing which sometimes works out and sometimes it turns out to be a terrible idea anyway so there we go and then let's do the same for videos and that's not gonna work so let's just do it the hard way so to speak and uh, commentable item ID is at video to global ID dot two s and let's go try this everywhere so we have our articles, we have videos. So here we should have video comment. Create this comment and it shows up. And then we can do forum posts. And let's try this. So forum post comment one. And everything works. So what's cool about this is that it makes it really, really easy to add this behavior. So I, as an exercise, I think you should imagine kind of what you would have to do to get this to work like this um, for several different objects that have, you know, a comment that can be attached or where a comment can be attached to different objects and how you would have to structure this um, and so on and so forth. You could probably do essentially the same thing, or you definitely could do essentially the same thing by passing in like a model name and a model ID. So you have to pass two variables instead of one, which is basically the exact use case that I discussed earlier with active storage. Uh, not active storage, uh, active job. There's too many action and active and whatever named things, and I lose track of them sometimes. Um, anyway, so all of that said, I think that's about it for this episode. I just wanted to kind of go through how this works. It's something I was experimenting with and thought it would be cool to share in case you haven't had a chance to look at it before. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and I will talk to you in the next one.